I would say to Donald Trump, President Trump, he's my president. I'm going to do everything I can to help him be successful any way humanly possible I can. But I'm going to speak truth to power, and you have to do it respectfully, too. You can do it respectfully. Make sure that you're adding something positive, not just being negative against things. If I'm against something you're for, Neil, I might say, Neil, can you consider this? It might help a little bit better and make it better for both. Those are the things we have to do. He has an unbelievable opportunity to bring the country together. Uh, Joe Manchin isn't the only one saying that kind of thing. Uh, Joe Rogan recommending that Donald Trump uh, do the same, uh, to reach out, to unite the country. That can often prove, no matter by what margin you've won a, an election, very difficult. Lee Carter, uh, GOP pollster, on, on, on that. You know, Lee, we always give and send a message, uh, let's unify as a country, and we never pull it off. And we put this enormous onus on the guy coming in uh, that he's got to lead the way. Uh, easier said than done, right? It's way easier said than done, but Donald Trump has talked about how success is going to be his great unifier. And if he is able to address some of these big issues that people are talking about, namely if inflation starts to really come down, um, he addresses the, the problem at the border, I think we're going to start to see people coming together. The other thing is people have been made so afraid of Donald Trump. They say that he's going to be a dictator, he's going to be a fascist, he's going to be out of control. I think if in the first six months he proves to be a little bit more the stable genius, the so and so he calls himself, uh, the more likely we are to be able to come together because we do have so much in common. When you look at the exit polling, when you look at what's most important to voters, if we're able to address some of these issues, we're on the same team and we can be in this together. You know, I, I wonder too what a victory in both the popular and the electoral vote means for Republicans. First time we've seen that in some 20 years. Um, so uh, you could see the, the position the Democrats are in. All right, well, let's not fight with this guy right off the, the bat and uh, let's see what we can do because he seems to have more of the American people behind him than we do and he seems to have won over core constituents that used to be exclusively ours that no longer are. So what do you make of that? So one of the things that I make of it is there's just such a miscalculation and American voters told us this from the beginning. 68% of Americans said that they saw Donald Trump as someone who was going to fight for them. A lot of people made fun of that statistic and made fun of saying, oh, Donald Trump's not going to fight for you. He's there to fight for himself. There was a lot of trying to turn that on its head. Right. But the American people saw him as somebody that was to fight for them. And I think everybody who lost needs to take a good look in the mirror and try to figure out why is it that the voter did not see them as somebody that was fighting for them. Um, and I think this is a realignment. I think this is going to be a moment. You know, the Republican Party has now become the party of the working class middle American um, voter. And that means I think the Democrats are really going to have to redefine themselves because that's what they've always claimed to be. Um, and now they're not viewed that way. I'm wondering, too, like, what do you make of the, the appointment of, of Susie Wiles to be the chief of staff? She's famous for saying, I don't want to misquote her, that, you know, sort of stop the clown card from coming to the White House, that, 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 that there's got to be a lot of discipline to this process, that people being considered for cabinet and other positions really have to be uh, in sync with the president's vision. Uh, and, and it's as simple as that. It's not a birthright because you've been a former secretary or a former big deal uh, that you, you warrant consideration by this president. Uh, again, uh, that's a tall task, but that balance between looking for loyalty uh, and, and looking for real professional qualities. I think that she's she's a, a great pick uh, for Donald Trump. She clearly has a way of being able to keep him in line and talk to him and communicate uh, with him in a way that helps him keep some discipline. Um, and I, I think that the American people do want to see uh, the right people coming in for the job. There's a lot of concern. A lot of people said with so much turnover in the first um, administration, who's going to go to work for him now? I think all eyes are on this. And as people are starting to see the talent that's coming in, I think it made a big difference. I think as you look at the final days of the, the campaign, the impact of, of, of Elon Musk was huge. The impact of some people that uh, in business that surrounded Donald Trump is huge and I don't think can be underestimated. So as we look at uh, those jobs getting filled, I think the American people re regain confidence as they see who those people are. You know, we talk about Elon Musk coming in this advisory role, I guess, where he will have great sway in deciding where there's waste and whatever and, and, and whacking trillions of dollars of government spending. John Paulson, the big hedge fund billionaire manager, who was with me a few days ago, Lee, was saying uh, if he were Treasury Secretary, he'd be happy to work with someone like Elon Musk. Now, the flip side of that is you have these billionaires 
uh, you know, making decisions on what programs come and go, uh, and, and the president himself, uh, a, a multi-billionaire. That kind of stuff was never an issue with John Kennedy and, and, and certainly the Roosevelt family. Uh, and you can go to even the Bush family, very, very rich, very pristine families all, uh, who, 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 who had control of the White House. I'm just wondering whether we overstress that. Well, I think there's been a rejection of the notion that success is something to look down on. I think that I the think Democrats right. really tried to run on, you know, taxing the billionaires and saying that they're completely out of touch. And what the American people said is it was them that was out of touch with the, the working class and the everyday American. And there were some of these really successful people like Elon Musk, you go through the other the others on the list, and they're viewed as people who are you know, living out the American dream and are knowledgeable and yet still in touch with the American people. So again, I really think that we're going to have a realignment in how people view the world. All right. Amazing. And I think you're right, because sometimes how much you have in your wallet doesn't affect how you connect with average folks. To, to your point, uh, FDR, very popular with average folks and through the Depression. Uh, you could say the same about John F. Kennedy. Uh, and certainly uh, uh, at this early going of one Donald J. Trump. Lee Carter, thank you very much. Very good seeing you again. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.